Hi, this is Mark Pritchard again, and in this second uh, recording, uh, I'd like to show you how we can switch from using the built-in uh, WebLogic server clustering mechanisms for HTTP session state replication to using uh, the active cache integration between WebLogic server and the Oracle coherence data grid. So uh, I have exactly the same setup as before. I've got a, a WebLogic server domain with a two-server cluster running here and uh, remember again I have uh, my Oracle HTTP server running listening on port 80 and then I'm using the uh, WebLogic server reverse proxy plugins within uh, OHS uh, so that I'm actually forwarding all traffic on that listen port through to the, the two servers in the WebLogic server cluster. So let's have a quick look at uh, the very, the changes, the two changes we're going to make in the deployment descriptors. So there's no code changes uh, to switch this implementation. What I've got here is a second uh, exploded ear file. So this is one which is set up to use coherence web. And let's just have a look at, at what we're going to do. So first of all, I'm going to go down into the um, the web app, and let's just open up the web inf folder. Here we are, and now if we have a look at the WebLogic XML deployment descriptor, uh, you can see all the same as before, only I've replaced the WebLogic, WebLogic clustering uh, reference with the library reference that loads a coherence web spi.war shared library, which I'm just going to deploy in the normal way as a shared library. And simply by doing that, this will trigger WebLogic to use the built-in integration with Coherence Web so that whenever we make the API calls to um, write to or, or read from the HTTP session state object, that will automatically be hooked and uh, the, the calls will be implemented using the Coherence Web implementation within WebLogic Server. So that's what we do at the at the web app level. Let's just have a look at um, what I'm going to do now at the uh, ear level. So we just look again at the WebLogic deployment descriptor at the ear level. That's WebLogic application.xml, and this is uh, related to security roles and so on. And here you can see I've got two library references and this coherence cluster ref. Now I need to load the uh, coherence shared library so we can get all the coherence jars. I could either package that in my application and I could do that at the war scope or I could do that at the ear scope as here. So here we having all the coherence jars would be shared by you know all the web applications deployed as part of this ear. And I've also loaded another shared library. Well, I'm going to in a minute. Here's the library reference. And this is the uh, active cache shared library. And what this lets us do is to uh, define and manage the coherence cluster. So these are the coherence cache servers, which are actually doing the session state management for us. And our web logic servers are going to join that cluster as storage disabled uh, nodes. And we can define and manage all that using WebLogic Server through, I'm going to use the admin console and the WebLogic node manager to do that. And my uh, coherence cluster, I've all actually used the same name. I've called that the auction cluster. And simply by loading this shared library and including that coherence cluster reference here in my WebLogic application XML, that's all I need to do. So again, no code changes in my application at all. Uh, I haven't had to recompile, rebuild, or anything like that. I've simply repackaged using uh, two different deployment descriptors. So that's the application. So what we need to do first of all is let's deploy those shared libraries. And I'll do that quickly here. So um, uh, I already have these down here. These are included with the WebLogic server distribution. So in fact, what I'm going to do is let me just deploy the main coherence jar, and I'll just deploy that to all servers in the cluster. There are different ways in which I could do that. 
but I'm happy to deploy that as a shared library on WebLogic Server. Uh, warns me just to say, is that what you wanted? And that is what I wanted, so I'm just going to deploy this as a shared library. And then what I'm also going to do is I'll just go and I will deploy the coherence web SBI.war, which is what it enables the um, the built-in integration with the coherence session management uh, in WebLogic Server. So again, I'm going to deploy this as a shared library, target to all the servers in the cluster. There we go. And then finally, I'm going to deploy the active cache library. Now where that lives is under the WebLogic server installation, the common deployable libraries. So if I switch there, then you'll see the, this, for example, is where I deployed the, the JSTL and other libraries from. But I'm going to deploy my active cache.jar. And again, it's asking, do I want to do that as a shared library? And I do. And then I'm just going to choose to deploy this no stage. So let me do that. And now, because I have Active Cache deployed in that way, I can actually take advantage of the built in integration. So, for example, I have a coherence cluster defined here. And in fact, I've used uh, an external uh, cluster configuration file. This is basically a coherence override file. And I'm using well-known addresses here. So I'm going to have a number of coherence cache servers started on well-known addresses. And in a sort of full clustered sort of HA deployment, I would then have those servers distributed uh, you know, across multiple physical servers for availability. And those are the addresses for which you know, uh, other coherence nodes like the WebLogic servers to which we're going to deploy the application, they will connect to the servers running on the well-known addresses to discover the configuration of the cluster and, and then the coherence protocols take over from there. So that's my coherence cluster definition. There are various ways of I could define the addresses manually through the you know, WebLogic Server Admin Console or through WLST or something like that. I've chosen to use a, a coherence override file. And then I can define coherence servers. So these are cache servers. These are started up through the WebLogic Server Node Manager, just like managed servers would be. And you can see here I've started them up. And in fact, those are my well-known addresses and ports. So I'm running them on my hosted server here and I'm starting them on the ports that I've defined as, as well-known address servers. So what I'm going to do here is just start up those two uh, WebLogic managed coherence cache servers. And in fact, if I went back to the, um, you can see here, we're using the WebLogic server node manager, and I'm starting up the cache servers down here. So let's just pop those down. So I've got my two cache servers. I've got a coherence cluster up and running. So what I can now do is I can go back to my um, application deployments. I've got the shared libraries set up. And now I can go ahead and deploy my application. So let's go down here. And I want to go to the version which is set up for coherence web, where I have those uh, references in the WebLogic XML and WebLogic Application XML, and I'm going to deploy that as an application. I'm going to deploy this to both servers in the cluster. Now, remember, I'm not actually using WebLogic Server clustering for the session state replication, but I am using it here because I want to deploy uh, things like clustered JMS um, distributed destinations and so on to a to a cluster. So I'm using the WebLogic Server clustering, and I can deploy it it was as a single target and I can sort of manage that cluster as a single entity but the um, application itself is is having its session state replication managed using the coherence cluster behind WebLogic Server and the great advantage of this is that we can then offload the storage of se those session objects to the coherence cluster at which can therefore be, be scaled out you know to uh, really extreme scale 
without uh, compromising the performance of the, the WebLogic server uh, uh, application server tier, which is serving up the web application. So I've deployed my application there. You can see that's now active on the various managed servers. So what I need to do now is let me just get up my application again. So let me go back to my browser. And I'll go to my hosted server and let's hit obey. So we're going through the OHS, the reverse proxy. And let me just log on to this again. So let me log on as seller. Once again, uh, let me you know look at my auctions. And if I go back to my terminals here, I can see the, the various servers that I have going on. And what I can do is, again, I can come in now and I can shut down auction server one. And so just to show you that happening. And then I can go back over here. I can refresh my browser and I can see that my HTTP session is unaffected and I can carry on working just as before. So I have two equivalent impl implementations here. Uh, the thing that's different about the use of the coherence web integration is that I'm now actually able to take advantage of the scalability of the coherence data grid to manage my, uh, my session uh, replication and to contain all my session objects. And I have a great deal of flexibility in terms of how I would configure that. But as you can see, from a WebLogic server point of view, it's very straightforward to take an application which, is, uh, which uses WebLogic clustering to, to manage session replication. And I can switch to, to co using Coherence Web through the built-in active cache. And of course, I can do the same thing in reverse. Thank you very much.